Hello again viewers, Tenerife, my last trip, how much did it cost? We're going to go through all the prices of the flights, the hotels, I'll let you know my thoughts on the various deals, the good and the bad. Back in Scotland at the moment viewers, I wish you all the best if you're celebrating Christmas and let's go through it all together. Check this passport out. All these wee stamps here are causing me issues when I go to the airports now. They're starting to look through them all, they're wondering what's going on. They won't even believe that I've got a YouTube channel probably. Um, we'll wait and see viewers, but I'm running out of spaces for the stamps. Anyway, let's get into it. I need to get the reading glasses on. Pound fifty from Home Bargains, these ones. Let's go. Right, so if you've missed the previous videos, I've done lots of videos recently in Tenerife, Gran Canaria, Lanzarote, Fortaventura, still got a few from Benidorm. I know it's confusing viewers, I'm going to be in Scotland for a wee while yet, hopefully be away mid to end January on the next trip, we'll wait and see viewers. I'm looking for ideas for February, so if anybody's getting ideas, let me know in the comments, apart from the Canary Islands, anywhere else, it's going to be hot in February, let me know. Okay, so first of all, I just wanted to thank everybody for watching the videos, I'd really, really appreciate it. Recently the channel has hit 15 million views, which is amazing. Just thank you so much for all your support, I'd really, really appreciate it. I could not do the videos without you, it means a lot to me. A wee shout out to all the guys who have recently bought a coffee. Um, a wee shout out to Matty, Lee R, Tony, John Fagan, Gregor, Peter McKenzie, Straxon, Jackie, Steph, Spencer, Jacqueline Ross, Jane and Al, and Marie Murray. Thanks so much for your kind coffees. I'll be spent wisely on a coffee or a beer. Thanks very much. Um, also thanks to the guys who donated through PayPal. Recently, Joyce and Eddie and Jim McCann. Thanks so much guys, I really appreciate it. And for everybody else who's been watching the videos, I just can't thank you enough. That's what helps the channel grow the most. Thanks so much guys. Now, let's get into it. There's some good deals here and some bad deals on the last trip to Tenerife. The flights were with Ryanair, the most expensive flights I've bought in a long time. I was tied in for dates on the return flight. The return flight was the one that cost a lot of money. The flight going out was pretty cheap, I think it was under £60. But return was £160 return with Ryanair. So probably my most expensive one I bought recently. No bags were included, as you know, I travel light. Don't book any bags in if I can avoid it. I've got a wee story coming up, maybe next month, letting you know about the, a mistake somebody made uh, flying with Ryan there recently that cost them €100. Euros. Coming soon, viewers. Okay, so let's get into the accommodations. The very first night, I stayed at the Marola Portisan Apartments in Las Americas. They're just kind of at the back way of Los Cristiana, San Telmo. Location-wise, they were fine. They were quite expensive, £67 for a studio apartment. Not my best deal. That was when I turned up at the airport with no accommodation. I literally landed in Tenerife. Still hadn't booked my first night because I wasn't sure where I wanted to stay. Tenerife, in case you didn't know, for new viewers, in the winter time, really from October to maybe March, April, it's high season in the Canary Islands. It's not like mainland Spain, where if you go to like some Mallorca, Costa del Sol, etc. If you go there in July and August, accommodation can be very expensive. Whereas if you go in the winter, it's very cheap. It's the opposite way about with Tenerife often. So when I actually landed at the airport, there was hardly any accommodation even available to book. It wasn't even a case I had to pick something and the prices were high. There was hardly anything available for under £100 a night. So we made a wee mistake there, but the accommodation was fine. I know quite a lot of viewers have stayed in it before. Check out the video I've done showing you the studio room. I had no complaints. Would I stay there again? Yes, I'd stay there again. Would I pay £67 for one night? Probably not. That was too much. I think the accommodation is more worth mid-50s. £60 max, maybe. That's just my thoughts. It's different if you book a package deal. You've got better deals if you're staying longer. Probably. I was only staying one night. Absolutely fine. Then uh, we moved on, I think, after that to the Tui Hotel, the Tamino Tropical in Porto Santiago up near Los Gigantes. 
I paid £64 for all inclusive, so all my meals, all my drinks were included in a one bedroom apartment, that was for two people, so in effect it was £32 per person, I thought it was incredible value, for a three star hotel, I thought the complex was nice, the location's hilly, personally I wouldn't stay there for a week or two because there's not enough going on, there's a couple of nice bars next to it, Route 66 is a good bar for live music, you can jump along to Los Gigantes, lots of nice bars there with live music and entertainment, some nice restaurants. So it depends what you like. The transfer time to the airport is probably just over an hour. So my preference would be to just jump on a taxi or a bus to Los Cris or Las Americas, 15-20 minutes. But I met quite a lot of people who stay in Los Gigantes and Puerto Santiago. The views are amazing. You cannot beat the views up there. It's very scenic. If you're looking for a relaxed, chilled out holiday, this hotel is great value for money, I think. For what I paid, it was amazing. I didn't take advantage of the all-inclusive. It was San Miguel and Draft as well, which I quite like, but uh, I was taking it easy that day. So that hotel, I thought was brilliant value for money. Would I stay there again? 100% if I was going back up to Puerto Santiago and Los Gigantes, I would stay in this hotel with no hesitation. I thought the standard of the room was very good, the one bedroom apartment. The food, check out the videos I've done on the channel showing you the breakfast, lunch and evening meal. The food was perfectly acceptable, it was three star standard. I would say it was better standard than quite a lot of the three stars that have been in. You'll see videos recently, I was in a three star hotel in Lanzarote, the Blue Bay Lanzarote Hotel in Costa Teguise. This to a uh, Tamil Tropical Hotel was a much higher standard food than the one in Lanzarote. So ratings will vary. If you stay in a three and a four star, depending on where you're staying, the standard of food and accommodation can be quite a big difference. So I'd stay here again, 100%. £32 per person for two people. Staying in a one bed, all your meals and all your drinks, that's a no-brainer. Um, I met some people at the hotel, Mike from the Borough, lovely meeting you. Um, who were telling me about the deals they had for a week's all because of great value for money but a quiet location okay so we're then going to I ended up staying two nights in the pension player hostel in Los Cristianos I've done quite a lot of videos showing you the room there it's incredible value £22 per night for a private single room the bathroom's just right outside you've got a wee communal room they did leave me a wee half bottle of whiskey in there. I didn't drink that beer, somebody else drank it. Um, I won't do any more videos in there because I'm now looking at different dates going forward and I'm seeing it's fully booked. So a lot of people are booking that, I think. It's incredible value. If you don't mind, obviously, a budget one-star accommodation. The location is amazing. Next door to the Fountain Bar, Popeyes, Tapas Bars, the beach, the promenade. Just amazing value for money. So that's the pension player. Then we went on to the Atlantida check-in bungalows. I stayed there for three nights. Again, about the accommodation. I think this one actually booked a wee bit in advance. I had some friends staying at the Hollywood the, uh, Mirage apartments at the top of Cardiac Hill. The apartments were lovely. If you've seen the video I've done for Davey and Mo were staying, I was really impressed with their apartment. It was a lot nicer than the one I was staying in. They did pay a wee bit more. And the accommodation is at the very top of the hill, the Hollywood Mirage. But I can understand when people go up there, they've got restaurants, they've got bars, swimming pools, they've got an indoor pool, jacuzzi, eh, they've got a gym. So I can understand why people stay there all the time. But where I was staying was at Atlantida. I paid £167 for three nights. So it worked out on average about £56 per night. Atlantida would have stayed there again. Not sure. It depends what room you get. The room I had, you've seen the video on the hotels and apartments playlist. It was miles away from reception. It was facing the main road, so it didn't really have any kind of sun coming in at the back. Well, it did a wee bit. There was no privacy, and it was on a very busy location where my terrace was. If you're at a room at the front near reception on the Atlantida, and you've got a nice balcony, and you've got a peaceful location, I can understand why it would be good value for money. I've seen a lot of families there, they do it all inclusive. Location wise, I actually quite like it. It's halfway up the hill, 
between the Promenade and the El Mirador strip. So quite a lot of the bars that I like round about there, the Buddies Bar, uh, Taylor's Lounge, The Vault, etc, Dylan's. A lot of the bars that I go in are right next to that one, Tida. So location wise, I quite liked it. It depends on the room you get. It's not my favourite apartment i stayed in, I'd say. Would I stay in it again? Probably would. But I'd hope I'd get a better room. Just depends on the room viewers, doesn't it? A lot of times, depends on the room you get. So that was the accommodation in Tenerife. If you're enjoying the videos in Tenerife and all the other places, do me a wee favour. I've not mentioned it before. It does not cost a penny. Hit the wee button there that says subscribe. It's absolutely free. If you're on your TV, it'll be down there. Hit the wee camera icon. And just click OK when it says subscribe to the channel. Uh, when I do new videos or live videos, live videos are rare because I make a mess of them all the time. Um, you get a wee message for upload new videos. So let's summarise how much does it cost for eight nights in Tenerife, including the flights and the hotels. Flights were 160. The hotels were 342 pounds in total. That did include one hotel that was all inclusive basis. So that was quite good. Other ones were just self catering. Total for eight nights, travelling all about the place, different accommodations, was £502 for eight nights. Not my best deal, this one. I would say pretty expensive, some of them were. The hostel brought the price down a wee bit to more acceptable levels, but good value for money. The all-inclusive hotel, £64 per night for two people. It was amazing value. Marola Portisan was a bit expensive for what it was. Atlantida was average, never in the room but didn't really bother me, I was always heading out and about, but overall viewers, average deals, good and bad, let me know what you think in the comments, I really appreciate it, check out the other video I'm going to do in Lanzarote and Fortaventura costumes in Gran Canaria, they'll be coming on the channel soon, I'll break it down, Lanzarote and Fortaventura, I did get some better deals on flights, really cheap in Gran Canaria, really cheap in flights as well, all depends. These flights were booked at kind of last minute um, and some of the hotels were booked at last minute. Sometimes it is better book in advance. I'm going to do a video showing you how to book in advance on Skyscanner. Never booked through Skyscanner. I remember the video with David, my friend, when he booked the flight that never materialised the next day. So find the flights cheap in Skyscanner, then book directly through TUI or EasyJet, Ryanair, Jet2, Hotels, TripAdvisor, Booking.com, always type in the hotel name in Google, check see if anybody else is doing it different uh, different price, just basic 101. Anyway viewers, thanks for watching, that rounds up the costing in Tenerife, thanks for all the support, see you in the next one. Don't forget to give a wee thumbs up, and new viewers, hit the wee subscribe button. See you later.